Hi, this is Miguel again. I wanted to do a add a part two to this the Passover scam clip. And the first clip, obviously, some of the pictures came out a little blurry, so I wanted to refine that a little bit. And the text uh, that will be in is Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 through 33. And S Steve Muncie is primarily the one that's... Uh, perpetrating this. Uh, he's been on Inspiration Network, TBN, on Benny Hinn's show and, and some others so it kind of shows you that this is coming out of the, the Word of Faith sector. Uh, the folks that preach uh, so much biblical error and heresy. But uh, this is uh, someone that is seeking to separate you from your money and as I've said before, the basis for this is Old Testament. Uh, there's nothing in the New Testament that would indicate that we need to do these feasts uh, now. So uh, I just wanted to go through <clears throat> these supposed blessings that you will get. And uh, as Easter's coming up in a few days, you've probably been bombarded with this and on these networks and, and some other networks if you have satellite. And these are the seven supposed blessings, as I said. Number one, that God will assign an angel to you. Number two, God will be an enemy to your enemies. Three, God will give you prosperity. Four, God will take your sickness away from you and your family. Five, God will give you a long life. Six, God will increase, cause increase in your life. Seven, God will give you a special blessing. And even as you just go over his list, you can see where the focus is, is on money. Number three, you know, health and wealth stuff. Number three, number four, number five, number six, and seven are all focused on finances and health. So it shows you where the focus is. And if you look at these verses, these are talking about God uh, <clears throat> commanding the nation of Israel back then. Uh, three times a year you shall celebrate a feast to me. And I, I was saying in the last clip how they focus on that verse. The verses in verse 15, that uh, last part of the verse, none shall appear before me empty-handed so you'll hear this a lot that we ought to bring our on top of our tithe and, and offerings that these are special things that God is telling us to do now and how we shouldn't come empty-handed and of course you know what that means either have your checkbook credit card or cash ready for them and he focuses on those verses but there's a lot <clears throat> that he did not say that hopefully I can go uh, over very quickly. That first blessing, um, supposed blessings in verse 20, and uh, he says that you're going to have an angel, but let's focus uh, on these supposed financial blessings. Is that God will give you prosperity. There is nothing in the text in these verses that says anything like this and again this is why I say frequently we have to make sure that what we hear is lining up what we hear from the pulpit is, is lining up with the word number four God will take your sickness away from you and your family I, I just just think about that for a second this guy is trying to tell me trying to tell us that if I give this Passover blessing that I, I'm never going to get sick again. God's going to take sickness away from, not only from me, but my whole family. I mean, how great would that be if that were possible? But you and I know, especially if you have a big family, that there's somebody usually has a sniffles or a cold or whatever and passes it around the family. So this is just foolish. And this guy just preys on what folks are looking for. You know, uh, people... And it's a, it's a legitimate concern, our health, you know, or taking care of our families. And so these folks pray on this sort of thing. They pray 
that uh, if you give, some God's going to do this for you. And it's always, this is the guy, you always hear him say, God is fixing to do whatever, blah, blah, blah. If God wanted to give you something, he would give it to you. If God wanted to do something, he is sovereign, and he would do it and get it done immediately. He doesn't wait. Nowhere in the New Testament do you hear or read anything about Jesus saying, well, God, uh, I'm getting ready to heal you. You know, Jesus just healed him. Uh, the, you know, the withered hand, whether it was a leper or, of course, somebody being raised from, from the dead, he did it, and it was immediate, and all of his miracles were public miracles. There were no private miracles. There was no God is fixing to do something for you. So be very careful that what you read and what you hear lines up with the word. These folks are nothing but charlatans. And uh, recently, I don't even know if it's over, but TBN was having one of their begathons. They have a couple a year. And Inspiration does the same thing now. So, you know, they, they learn how to scam folks. And uh, they have these things a few times a year, and they come up with these things. Uh, Steve Muncy is one that's prone to coming up with these number of formulas that, you know, it, just all sorts of nonsense that is extra biblical. And you can never have that when you're, when you're, when you're a preacher or a pastor. You should stick to the word, not to anything else. So none of these things, these blessings, <clears throat> are in the text. That God will cause increase in your life. Well, you know that what that's code for, that God's going to give you more money. Nowhere in the text. And this special blessing. So again, he's trying to, to make you think that you're not only going to get all these things, but you're going to get something special. Again, nowhere in the text. Number one, interesting enough, and I'll read the verses in verse 20 and 21. It says, and again I'm in Exodus 23. Behold, I am going to send an angel before you to guard you along the way and bring you into the place which I have prepared. Be on your guard before him and obey his voice. Do not rebe be rebellious toward him, for he will not pardon your transgression, since my name is in him. So my angel refers to it's a reference to the angel of of Yahweh in in other words uh the pre incarnate Christ so he he you know evidently he doesn't even know this so this is why reading a text dig into the text don't be caught off guard by these scams and you, you you'll get them at different times of the year i mean i've seen this guy on different networks and different shows uh, around this time of the year and other times he, 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 he tries to scam folks with other things. So remember people, be on guard as we're told to be, uh, to be sober, be vigilant. We need to make sure that what we are hearing is in line with the Word of God and don't be afraid to speak out against those things. Jude is a very, it's just a, a short book, uh, but it is full of so much information that can help you uh, see what makes a false teacher, and not only that, staying away from them, uh, being a contender of the faith. The once, and I'll read this verse from Jude in closing, He's writing here in the uh, second part of verse 3, I felt the necessity to write to you, appealing to you, contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. So those that who that know Christ be contenders for, for the faith. Don't be afraid to speak out against heresy and error. And those of you that who, that do not know Christ, my hope and prayer is that you would be convicted of your sin and come to the cross in repentance and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and become your Lord and Savior even today.